Eddie Redmayne, Lashana Lynch, and Ursula Corbero team up for a globetrotting adaptation of the assassin-centric series, The Day of the Jackal. It's debuting on Sky, and then a bit later on Peacock. So are you going to want to watch? An unrivaled and highly elusive lone assassin makes his living carrying out hits for the highest fee. But following his latest kill, the Jackal meets his match in a tenacious British intelligence officer who starts to track him down in a cat-and-mouse chase across Europe, leaving destruction in its wake. So we've had the 1973 cinematic version, and then the 1997 Bruce Willis version. Now, nearly 30 years later, we get this as a 10-episode thriller series. Eddie Redmayne's in the lead role, with Lashana Lynch playing the MI6 officer working to track him down. Now, this is a wildly tense story, wrought with nail-biting action, even more suspenseful close calls. And while each of the iterations of the story are somewhat different, the core remains the same across all of them. We follow a deadly assassin with an unknown persona who's then pursued by agents trying to prevent further murders. Now, the pacing for this series, it is deliberate and patient, but it's filled with intensity. Right out of the gate, the series shows us what we can expect, not only from Redmayne, but also from the storytelling in general. And I wouldn't call this slow or even a slow burn. There are quiet stretches within the plot, but these are by design to allow the arcs to develop and then to also create scenarios that grow our characters. And that's something that is very different from the Bruce Willis film. In this show, we eventually get a lot of background information on the Jackal, and that can work in different ways. It can make this seemingly evil character somewhat sympathetic, building him into an anti-hero. Or it could even make him even more despicable because we see into his life and then what choices he makes in order to maintain his anonymous professional life. Now, for me, it was a little like Rob Zombie's version of Michael Myers in his Halloween reboot. Michael was no longer a terrifying and merciless killer, but because of his upbringing, he now had a reason for his actions. And I'm not saying that the Jackal's upbringing has anything to do with what he does or not. It's just a similar situation when you remove the mystery of a killer's background. But no matter where you might land with how you see the Jackal, Redmayne is phenomenal in the role. While he retains some of his characteristical stammering delivery, we get to watch him morph into various personas through makeup, postures, and voices. Now, I think most of his intensity comes from the quietness that he possesses. There's this truly unsettling vibe that he has. He's got cold and detached sociopathic behaviors that intriguingly contrast with warm and caring interactions. Redmayne nailed it across the board. In each situation, I believed what he was putting out. And this created then a strangely satisfying and confusing emotional ride with the character. There are moments when Redmayne is able to convincingly create a sort of visual moral dilemma in his decisions. While the Jackal is deadly and cautious, he also has dimension. So areas of his life can create complications that then influence his choice of actions. And there's also a wonderful patience that's showcased within the character. I mean, just based on a sniper having to wait for the opportune moment to take a shot, the Jackal must methodically plan every move, with Redmayne showing us the discomfort, anxiety, and resolve that's required to execute the job. <laughs> and then the person. There are a few scenes that play heavily on this, giving us the opportunity to watch Redmayne lay motionless in an area so that he's not discovered. But this same patience, it also comes into play as he applies his various disguises. I mean, there's a disciplined and meticulous attitude in which he works, illustrating the exacting nature of everything he does, even in small and seemingly innocuous ways. And each of these small actions work to inform the character, which then in turn creates someone captivating to watch, regardless if the scene is packed with action or quiet with inactivity. And then matching the intensity of Redmayne is Lynch as British intelligence officer Bianca. Now, she's shown that she can do action and spy-type roles like Nomi in No Time to Die, and then the warrior Izogi in The Woman King. Here, she utilizes those skills and then combines them with a fierce intelligence and tenacity that makes her a formidable adversary to the Jackal. Now, I love the smarts of the character, but she's created to be imperfect so that mistakes happen to create further plot complications that drive the story forward. And on a side note, which is completely unrelated, while the world may not be fully ready for a female Bond, I think Lynch would be a perfect new 007. Okay, so I appreciate that the story is balanced between following the Jackal and following Bianca, giving us time with each as they both pursue their targets. And it also doesn't feel like we're ping-ponging through the plot. The story definitely switches back and forth to showcase the different sides, but it doesn't skimp out on development that works to progress the story. 
Now, the drama is told well, with elements that build on each other to then increase intrigue, while also maintaining some mysterious aspects of what's to come. Now, probably the weakest portion of the season is the vaguely defined cabal that hires the jackal to take out a target. We get a basic understanding of their motivations, but it's a pretty generic MacGuffin to get the jackal on the job that will traverse the episodes. Luckily, this particular assignment doesn't have to be front and center for the show to work. There is an urgency that's created, so that continues the pressure within the storytelling, but it also allows other arcs to develop and then gain prominence to keep the whole thing engaging. And even with the genericness of the setup, the chase and stress that ensues as the subjects get closer to the climax ratchets up and then it's almost unrelenting. I really appreciate that there are several mysterious arcs that all contribute to the storyline. Not every single one is resolved when the season concludes, but there is still a satisfying conclusion. There's also more story that's left to unravel. But with those intriguing arcs, we can never be too certain of who's on the level and who's duplicitous, working to double or maybe even triple cross another. Now, for the action in the series, there's not a huge amount of hand-to-hand -hand combat or close quarters battles. I mean, there are some intense fights, but most of the action either comes from chases or gunfights. And when the gunfire begins, I mean, it's all out war. Most of the time we see characters with machine guns as they Swiss cheese everything in front of them with a seemingly nonstop barrage of bullets. It was impressive to watch with the excess matching the energy of the scene. Now, according to IMDb, the first five episodes are going to drop all at once. And that is an incredible binge session right there. Then the remaining five episodes will be released weekly. But the beauty of this release schedule, aside from the obvious binge, is that there is so much world building and story development that takes place to get you wildly invested. And the converse, that's also true. If you're not feeling it, you can tap out and not have wasted several weeks to determine that the show ultimately wasn't for you. I do think, though, thanks to the wonderful performances and the pounding stress of the story, that this is going to grab hold of you and then keep you glued to the couch. So overall, The Day of the Jackal is a gripping series with powerhouse performances from Redmayne and Lynch. The character depth is awesome, creating heroes and anti-heroes who are sometimes difficult to determine, and the plot is meaty enough to sustain the season's episodes. While the cabal at the center of the story is generic and stale, the chase, action, and drama all combine to deliver an exciting and engaging binge. There's sex, no nudity, a lot of profanity, and then a ton of violence. I give season one of The Day of the Jackal Four and a half out of five couches. If you got Peacock or Sky, you'll definitely want to give this one a go. Okay, so are there any assassin or espionage movies or maybe series that you really enjoy? I mean, one that I always enjoy watching is Gross Point Blank. I would love to hear yours, though, in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.